Welcome to Timber Church Faith University. My name is LaShawn Gant, and our lesson for today is coming is entitled The Sun Greater Than Angels. And our scriptures are coming from Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 9. The time um, of this was probably 80, 60s. And the place is unknown. The golden text is coming from Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 12. And the word of the Lord reads, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, having these last days spoken unto by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. God, I pray that as we review this lesson, that you would show us that no man is greater than you that you are the one supreme God. No one is worthy. No one can be compared to you. You are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, God, as we go through this lesson, I pray that someone would hear it and be encouraged. Someone would hear it and want to know what must I do to be saved. I give you praise, glory, honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, here in this introduction, the author of Hebrews does not name himself. His identity is unknown. The general consensus is that this letter was written written to the Jewish Christians. The purpose in the first part of chapter one is to show that Christ is better than the prophets. And Christ is better than the angels. The epistles begin without any greetings, demonstrating that there is not one personal letter, but a word of exhortation. Immediately, the author proclaims his theme. The work of Jesus Christ is God's final work and is supreme to all that which preceded it. The author clears up confusion by carefully explaining how Christ is superior to the angels. So let us go deeper into this lesson and we would see why here in Hebrews it is showing that Christ is higher than the angels. Here in verse 1, it declares that God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in the time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So this simply means that God, that God does speak at sundry times and in divers manners meant that he spoke in many separate revelations at many different times. Therefore, in the past, God spoke in many different ways to the fathers through his prophets. And God spoke, um, he spoke in things like visions and dreams, and even face to face to reveal little by little his will and even himself. The prophets of the Old Testament were great men and women of God who God spoke to and entrusted his message. However, no man could ever contain or share the whole revelation of God. Men could only stand only part of the fragrance of God. Therefore, God had to make revelations to many different people at many different times and manners. He had to make his revelation to different people 
um, because no man could contain what God was trying to tell them. Um, and let's move on. Let's move on to verses two. It declares that here in these last days, spoken unto us by his son, first God spoke to us by his son. Although God's word is found in the prophets, his word in his final age is found in God's very own son who came to earth and revealed God proclaiming all that God is. There is no one else who knows all of God and who God could send no greater messenger with his word than his very own son. So no one else, no, none of us, we know, we don't know there is to know of God. So God had to send his own son as his messenger. And this verse continues when it goes on to say, whom he appointed heir of all things. Secondly, Jesus was appointed, Jesus appointed heir of all things. Jesus, when what is Jesus to inherit or receive? Jesus is to inherit all power in heaven and earth. Jesus is to inherit the authority to execute all judgment unto men. Jesus is to inherit the whole universe. Jesus is to inherit all of the government. Jesus is to inherit the power, the riches, the wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Jesus is to inherit all the angels and all of the spiritual authorities and powers. Jesus is to inherit a name above every name and every knee shall bow before him. So when God appointed Jesus, he appointed, he appointed him with all power. Jesus has all power and authority. It goes on to say, by whom also he made the worlds, whom also he made the worlds. The worlds can be translated as ages, referring to time and space, energy and matter, the entire universe and everything that makes it function. Whenever they are and how Ever many there may be visible and invisible, Christ created them. There is nothing in existence that he did not create. God created everything. Nothing exists in this earth. I don't care if we talk about the animals, the trees, the oceans. Nothing exists in this earth world that God did not create. Then it goes on to say, and express the image of his person. So fifth, Jesus is the expression image of God. Jesus is perfect. Jesus is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. The word image means substance and essence. It's his character and it's his personality. Not only is Jesus Christ God's spokesman, he is God himself, the full revelation and complete embodiment, embodiment and complete of God himself. Jesus is God himself. Self, we go on to three, and it says, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Six, Jesus Christ upholds all things by the words of his power. He's a sustainer of the universe. No man could do, no man could do that. God did not create the world 
and leave it to fly in space. No, the word of Jesus Christ is love and his power keeps evil from completely conquering and utterly destroying all things. So God has all power in his hand and he has power that no man has. No man has the power and the authority as our God. And then it goes on to say, when he had by himself purged our sins. Seven, Jesus by himself purged our sin. He has taken us from unrighteousness to righteousness. The purpose of purging is to get rid of something that holds us back. Purging helps you by propelling you forward propelling you forward. When God purges us, he begins to rip things and take things from us. So how do he do that? When you confess and repent of the unrighteous behavior, you purge out all of your sin. Sin holds us down and holds us back. Purging brings deliverance, and deliverance allows us to move forward, to move forward. That's why sometimes we have to examine ourselves and see if there is anything that's in us that's not right. We got to ask God to purge us. We got to ask God to make us over again because we don't want to allow sin to hold us down and hold us back from moving forward. So sometimes we got to search our hearts. We got to search our motives and make sure that they are lining up with the will of God. Jesus gave himself that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a picture peculiar people. He he want we are peculiar people. We are called out to be different. No man could do this. Only a perfect person could ever purify and cleanse men from their sins. His perfect righteousness and his psycho sacrificial death stands for all men. So when God died he took that for all of us. And then it goes on to say, sit down on the right hand of the majestic on high. Jesus sits down on the right hand of majestic on high. Jesus sits there as the great mediator and intercessor for all men. No other person could ever come close to being seated or accepted at the right hand of God. The right hand is a place of power. It's a place of authority. It's a place of honor. Christ alone has this position. The seat that Christ has taken is the throne of God where he rules as our sovereign Lord. He rules as our sovereign Lord. Hebrews 4, 1 and 4 goes on and says, Being made so much better than the angels. Jesus was made so much better than the angels. Refers to his incarnation. The word made flesh, the son of God and the son of man. He still accomplished and the cleansing of our sins. His price he paid at Calvary, and then he was exalted as our Savior. Although angels have high and exalted positions, no angel was better than Jesus. No angel could perform what Jesus did. As God, Jesus also been greater than the angels, but here he is speaking of him 
as man in human form, as we go on to say, as he had inherited, obtained a more excellent name than they in his inheritance, in his permanent possession, he was declared to be the son of God. And he was made manifest that his name rightly belonged to him upon the discharge of his office at his resurrection and his extension to heaven. Therefore, he is said to obtain an, it by an inheritance. And the more excellent name that Jesus possessed is son, is son. And we move on to say he was declared to be the son of God. And it was made manifest that his name rightly belonged to him. So upon the discharge of his office at his resurrection and his ascension to heaven, therefore he is said to obtain it by his inheritance, the more excellent name that Jesus possessed is son. He, his name that he possessed is son. Verse five says, for unto which of the angels said at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. So here the Hebrew writers begins a series of the Old Testament quotations or questions, which the angels was asked to be God's son or was told that God will be his father. God said, thou art my son to Jesus, not to the angels. He alone has been begotten, that is born or sent into the world by God. The begotten son was declared to be the son of God by the father. Therefore, Jesus Christ, more supreme than the angels, because he became more supreme than the angels because of this. Jesus is the first and only begotten son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begot, we go on to number six. And again, when he bring in the first begotten into the world, he said, and, and let all the angels of God worship him. The word first begotten means in the sense, it means priority and superior of being above someone else. Jesus is the one who is to be worshiped and praised, not the angels. They, he was making it clear that even though the angels had power, but they didn't have the power and the authority that God had. So he was making it clear that Jesus is the one who is to be worshiped and praised and not the angels. Jesus is the person who entered the world as man. He is the person who was raised from the dead and who ascended into heaven to conquer death forever. He is the person who is to return and take us home to heaven to be with him eternity. The angels can't and are not able to do this. I say it again. The angels can't. And they aren't able to do this. Therefore, our worship, our hope, and our attention, and our praise ought to be to Christ. God gets the glory above everything. Nobody gets the glory but God. Nobody gets the glory. Your family, your children, your parents, your job. I don't care who it is. Nobody gets the glory but God. Verses seven goes on to say, and of the angels, he said, who made his angel spirits and his ministry ministers 
a flame of fire. So consider the word make. Angels are made that is created and controlled by God. They are created spirits who serve God. He makes he makes his ministering angels a flame of fire in the operation of the universe. They guide, they do battle, they bring messages, they serve God, and they honor the Father, therefore they honor the Son. So here he's explaining what the angel's job is and duties and responsibilities are. Verses 8 says, But the Son, he said, Thou throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the sceptre of the righteous is the sceptre, sceptre of thy kingdom. That means the throne. It means a known as, as known for authority. Jesus Christ is God the sovereign majestic, the king who sits upon his throne, not the angels, not the angels. Verse nine in our final verse goes on to say, thou has loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thou, God, had anointed thee with oil of gladness above thou fellers. Jesus Christ has been anointed with oil of gladness above all fe fellers. Who is meant by fellers? It is meant to be all creatures, both heaven and in earth. He is anointed above all the angels. He loves righteousness and hates iniquity. We must look to Jesus Christ for righteousness and not angels. In my summary, God's spokesmen in past times were, were at various times in different ways. He spoke to the fathers or the ancestors by his prophets to reveal his will and himself. However, at the end of these days, God spoke to us by his son. This is the son whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through him he made the worlds. Jesus is the brightness of God's glory, the express image of his person, and he upholds all things by the word of his power. He purged our sins and sat down on the right hand on high. Although the angels had high and exalted positions, no angel was better than Jesus, for by the inheritance he obtained a more excellent name than there. And then there's as evidence for his superiority of Jesus over the angels, the author proceeds to ask, which of the angels did he ask to be? Son, and he would be father. There is no other first begotten than Jesus in which the angels worship him. He made the angels to be spirits or messengers to spirits or messengers and servants to be as fiery flames. But for the Son, his kingdom, authority, and power will last forever and ever. His love, he loves right and hates wrong. God has anointing him, pouring out more of oil and gladness upon him than anyone else in our application. Angels are created beings to worship the creator, just also, just as we are also created to worship the creator. So 
we don't have to worship our time. We don't have to waste our time worshiping man, worshiping idols, worshiping things, worshiping our jobs, worshiping our children, worshiping money. We are created to worship God. No one becomes before God. God has all authority. He reigns all by himself. I pray that this lesson, that you was able to pull something out of this lesson, basically letting us know that no one is above God. The angels not are above God. No one is before God and all of our worship and all our praise should uh, should go to God and him alone. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you honor. God, we thank you for this time spent in the word, allowing us to know that though you created angels, but angels do not come before God. No one, our worship and our praise belongs to you. I pray that even as I taught this lesson, that we were able to find something in it that we learned that we can apply to our daily life. I thank you for this word. I thank you for spending time in this lesson. I give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.